Okay, so this talk was supposed to be about 12 minutes. I'm going to try to keep it under 10 so you can all go um, and get to your talk on time because we have a little bit of delays. Um, I'll just skip the part about me. I'm Anna. I'm at OSS Anna 16 on Twitter. I work as a community and operations manager, and you can read all the rest on social media, or you can come and find me afterwards. Um, today, I'm here to talk to you about self-care. And you may now think this is a tech conference. Why are we talking about mental health stuff? Why did John talk about burnout? Why am I talking about self-care? And that's a valid question, which I'll answer in a few minutes. Let's first take a look at what self-care is. I pulled up a definition here. Self-care is any activity that you do voluntarily, which helps you maintain your physical, mental, or emotional health. It can help you feel healthy, relaxed, and ready to take on your work and responsibilities. And if you look at this definition and you think of your own life, who of you think that you're practicing self-care? That's very few of you, okay. Um, so now we know what self-care is, but why should we practice self-care? Why is it important? Um, and to answer that, to, that the answer to that question is relatively simple. Self-care is important because it keeps us stay healthy, it helps us stay happy, and it helps us stay productive and motivated. And you may now think, nah, I don't need self-care. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm productive, I'm motivated. So let's take a look at that question from a different angle. What happens if we don't take care of ourselves? And John touched on that a little bit. As people in tech, we're prone to always being online. We love what we do. We love working too much. We want to change the world with the code that we write. We are always on our laptops. We're always connected. We never unplug. We neglect our families and friends and hobbies. Um, and you may think that this is a great work ethic, but it only lasts for so long. It can lead to relationship issues, it can lead to stress, it can lead to health issues, it can lead to unhappiness. And worst case, it can lead to total burnout, like John talked about. And some of you may have already suffered from burnout, and if you have, then you know how hard it is to get out of that cycle. So in order to prevent burnout from happening, we need to try and take better care of ourselves and take it pretty seriously. Um, some of you may have known for a long time that you need to practice self-care, but you're really struggling with it. Why is it so hard to follow through? Um, why is it so hard to establish healthy new habits? First of all, establishing a new habit takes about 21 consecutive days, so that's a long time. If you've ever tried, for example, to keep up a workout routine, that's hard to do in the beginning. We could always do more for work, right? We could always do more for our families or friends, right? So let's address that question in a little bit of an uncomfortable way. Is self-care actually selfish? And the answer to that question is no. Self-care is not selfish. In fact, it's the total opposite because if you take care of yourself, you have so much more to give for your friends and family, for work, etc. So don't let anyone tell you that self-care is selfish. Self-care is not self-indulgence, it's self-preservation. I read something online the other day that I thought was actually really cool and it says, always remember that your job doesn't love you back, it's other people that do. Um, what are some ways you can practice self-care? Um, I would like to note that self-care looks very different for other people. If you remember the um, def definition I showed in the beginning, it says that it's an activity that you do voluntarily and each of us likes to do different things to de-stress. So here are a few things in general that you can, should consider about self-care. Nutrition, this may sound simple, but it's actually a very important part of our lives. Make sure that you eat throughout the day, that you get enough meals, that you eat healthy foods, which keep you, which keep you energized. And let's be honest, sometimes the best kind of self-care is just eating a donut like we all did during the break. And also make sure that you get enough water. I often forget to drink. I think a lot of us do. So what helps me is just keeping a bottle of water on my desk. Or there are a bunch of good apps which help you regulate your water intake. Exercise can ease depression and anxiety. Exercise doesn't always have to mean extreme workouts. Workouts are not for everyone. It can just mean taking a 30-minute walk, walking your dog, taking your bike to work 
going to the gym, doing yoga, doing meditation, there is something for everyone. Just make sure that you get out every day and get that vitamin D. Sleep. During conferences, it's really difficult to get enough sleep, but at least at home, try to get at least seven hours of sleep. Try to turn off your um, electronic devices at least an hour before bed. Try to maintain a healthy sleep schedule, which means go to bed at the same time every day, get up at the same time every day. And if you need to, try to fit in a quick power nap. I read that according to NASA, apparently the most efficient nap time is 26 minutes. I have not tried that myself, but maybe one of you would like to. Um, take a mental health day off of work. Take a break from electronic devices, simply unplug. What I do sometimes is I take internet-free Sundays where I turn off my computer, my laptop, my tablet, and I just totally unplug. Or what I did two years ago, I took a three-week social media hiatus over Christmas, which was really great. We're so invested in social media that we don't even notice it. Um, what some of my friends do is they limit themselves to using only cell phones and tablets on weekends, which keeps them from working. I turned off emails on my phone or on my tablet, so I don't, I'm not even tempted to answer emails on weekends. Um, if you want to be really brave, don't take your vacation cell phone or tablet on vacation with you. Set a timer every day and tell yourself that you um, won't get on social media after 6 or 7 p.m. Try to put electronic devices away before you go to sleep. Stress relief. There are so many different things you can do. Take a bath, drink a cup of tea, get a massage, work in the yard, start a journal, whatever floats your boat. We're all individually, um, we all have individual interests and there are different things we like to do to de-stress. Just find out what works best for you and try to do it a couple times a week. And if you need a pick-me-up, hug a loved one, play with animals, like I said, your job doesn't love you back, but other people do. Bookmark sites on your laptop that help you de-stress. I found this really cool GIF which shows waves that I just watch on repeat when I need a moment to distress. Um, there's also certain songs which really works wonders for me. Just try to find something that works for you. Social support is really important. Reach out to friends and family members. Find someone you can call or visit whenever you need them. Manage relationships that you can balance in your private time and social time. And don't uh, feel obligated to hang out with toxic or negative people. Find online communities which support you. It's also really important to recognize when you need to see a healthcare professional. It's really okay to do that. And I know there's a stigma around seeing doctors and therapists, but they are here to help us. There's nothing wrong with it. So if you need that kind of help, go out and try to get it. Also, what's really important is try to be aware of the people around you, family members, coworkers, friends. If you see that someone's constantly working late nights or weekends, reach out to them and ask them if they are doing okay. If someone's looking sick, tired, or just unhappy, ask them if they are doing okay. Offer to lend a hand, offer to grab copy with them, offer to listen. They might not take you up on that offer, but it's always good to know that someone's there to help. And also be a good role model. Practice self-care and show that it's working. And at the end, I just wanted to show you two resources. There's a really great website called selfcare.tech, which shows uh, self-care resources, especially targeted for people in tech. And there's also a little bot on Twitter. It's called Tiny Care Bot. We're all on Twitter all the time. And this little bot tweets out little self-care reminders throughout the day, like get up from your desk, um, take uh, a walk, grab a, grab a cup of water. So check out that little Tiny Care Bot. It's really cute. Um, that's all I have for you today. I try to keep it short. If you have any questions, I'll be around afterwards. I'm, I'm at OSSANA16 on Twitter again. I'll be around throughout DockerCon again. And thank you so much for being here and listening today. Enjoy DockerCon.